Hello guys and welcome to The Phone Show, the new video series from TechRadar that aims to take you deeper into the world of smartphone technology. Our goal is basically to deliver you more detail, more depth and more expert insight into all things mobile. So whether it's the latest rumours, leaks or insider knowledge, we've got it all right here. Before we dive in though, here's a look at some of the latest whisperings from the smartphone scene. First up, leaked screenshots point to some interesting new features on the Sony Xperia Z2. Images out of the Xperia blog suggest Sony's next smartphone supports 4K video recording and a time shift mode, which lets you record video at a high frame rate and then apply slow-mo effects. There's also a smart backlight control that acts a bit like Samsung's Smart Stay feature by staying switched on while you're looking at the screen. Next up come more rumours about the highly anticipated HTC M8, otherwise known as the HTC One 2, and more specifically, the introduction of a twin sensor rear camera. The use of two sensors should allow for better focus, depth of field and image quality. The 4 megapixel lens on the HTC One was one of the most hotly contested features of the phone, so this might be enough to sway those not impressed by the current Ultra Pixel offering. Yet more leaks pointing towards a Nokia Android partnership suggest that the Nokia Normandy could be landing as early as February 25th. This would plant the unveiling conveniently in the middle of MWC 2013. Images we've seen so far have pointed towards a sort of Android Windows 8 mashup, but could it all be one big tease? And finally, rumours are again circulating that we might see a larger iPhone 6 in the second half of this year. According to reports emerging from China, Apple is apparently working on a 4.7 and 5.7 inch iPhone. The first of which we'll see at WWDC in June, and the other later down the line in 2014. However, we're taking this one with a large pinch of salt. Now over to our resident smartphone experts Gareth Beavis and John McCann to chat all things mobile. And this week they're talking Tizen, HTC and the Samsung Galaxy S5. Hi, I'm Gareth Beavis and I'm phones and tablets editor for Tech Radar. And I'm John McCann and I'm phones and tablets writer, also for Tech Radar. So what's really getting you excited at the moment? We've got so much coming up in the next few months. There's, you know, there's so much to talk about. Like, what's the big thing, do you think? Well, all the rumours are currently pointing towards Samsung Galaxy S5. That's where everyone's sort of speculating, wondering, will it, won't it, fingerprint scanner, eye scanner. It's all coming to the fore now, um, but it's still not 100% clear on which way it will go. I mean, the, the problem for me is that the Galaxy S4 just wasn't, it wasn't enough of an upgrade. It was good enough, enough people bought it because they were coming out of the S2 contracts and it, you know, it, was, it was attractive enough, but Samsung really needs to step change here. It needs something big, something that really sets, sort of sets a statement, it isn't all about the innovation of eye tracking and all that kind of stuff that the S4 brought, but something really big. I mean, I really want to see, you know, I really want to see a metal body. Everyone does. It wants to see a sort of step forward with that design. I don't know, and I'm just worried that it's not going to bring it. You keep hearing these rumors of two separate tiers. I honestly do think Samsung will, will step forward with design this time. But yeah, all that innovation and stuff that's going on, I'm, I'm a bit worried it's going to be a bit pointless. One area that Samsung is probably going to innovate, though, is the screen. We're hearing QHD, and I think I, I, I welcome that. You know, a brighter screen is probably going to be bigger, a higher resolution. That can only be good, surely. The problem is, though, that things like QHD are going to really confuse people. Some people are calling it 2K, which is also another word for full HD in some people's minds. What this, you know, people need to realize it just means a much higher resolution. And that's almost to the point of you know, diminishing returns. You, know, you can't really perceive that much extra clarity. So it feels like it's a little bit redundant, except in things like text reproduction. So when you're viewing internet pages, reading books and everything, things get so much sharper. And when that gets sharper, it becomes so much more legible and, and kinder on the eyes. And you start to want to use your phone for more things. So while the big sort of headline features will be about how much greater it is for just generally viewing photos and v movies and that kind of thing, there's really going to be some big advances in the smaller areas that are going to make a big difference. Something I'm not convinced about is a 64-bit processor that's being rumoured. Obviously, the 5S has it, but its sort of advantage at this moment in time is not overly clear. Yes, for future applications in years to come, there may be a clear advantage over the 64-bit chip, but we're in that sort of area where it's still a bit, no one's quite sure if, is it needed? I think the problem for me with 64-bit chips is not that they exist. I think it's a really good thing to have them now. It's just the companies like Apple are making a big deal about them. You know, 64-bit chip with only one gigabytes of RAM, it's, it's not really needed. It doesn't really add a huge amount. There are some very small gains, but really what it's doing is setting the tone for the future. I mean, 64-bit chips in phones are going to be brilliant in three or four years' time because you can almost have a desktop replacement. It, you know, you can bring it into your desktop, into your workplace and just pop your phone down you've got your whole computer that's the future we're talking about and that's why 64-bit chips are coming now the problem is that you know when we haven't got the amount of RAM that you need um, they don't really have the apps that can support them there's not much point in making a big deal about it something I am interested in seeing though is the sort of security side of stuff fingerprint scanner or even retina scanner touch ID on the iPhone works really well it's a really nice feature although its use is limited 
to just unlocking and paying for purchases. But I reckon that's something that Samsung is going to get on board with pretty quickly. I mean, it's, it's actually interesting, the whole biometric area. I mean, yeah, I mean, you say it's limited, but it's really useful. I mean, getting rid of the password was instantly the start, reason I started using an iPhone a lot more because, you know what, I, I actually want to have security, but I don't want to be messing around with passcodes all the time. And I really do need them. And I always feel really guilty that I don't use them. Um, I think Samsung may actually skip it with the S5. I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of stuff around them not really getting interested in biometrics, buying firms, not buying firms. So I think it's, it's really something that the company realizes that it needs to make good and it needs to make it really effective and, and functional like Apple has done. And I don't think it's got a really clever idea of doing it yet. Things like the HTC One Max wasn't the right implementation. A scanner on the back, it just does not work. So I think biometrics are coming, but this whole eye scanning, uh, you know, fingerprint scanning that people have been rumored so far, I just... I can't see it happening with the S5. It may be 2015's problem, but it, it's necessary to a degree, but not sort of the point that it won't sell phones. There's a really left field rumor that's saying that Tizen might feature on the S5 in maybe a slightly different version. And while that's highly unlikely, we are probably going to see a Tizen phone this year, if not several. Uh, Samsung are heavily rumoured, ZTE are even said to possibly launch one at MWC in a few weeks' time. It will be going up against OSs which have a huge array of apps and features and grounding, so it needs to start off somewhere and if it can get into sort of the emerging markets and make waves there, then it can slowly build on that foundation and provide bigger, better, faster phones and it will also give developers, look, we've got so many million of users it's time to start developing apps for us and then that will help the app store grow. Yeah, I think it makes sense. But, you know, I mean, what if people forget is that this is built on two really great operating systems. It's taking a lot from what Samsung learned with Barda. It's building on Mego, which, you know, I think was a really good operating system. I think the, you know, the hacker community has really enjoyed it. It'd be really interesting to see what happens with it. And while I don't think anyone out there is going to be hankering after a Tizen phone right now, three or four years down the line, if this, this strategy continues correctly, it's going to be quite interesting. Definitely something to keep an eye on for sure, but moving back to the high end of the mobile market, we're hearing a lot about HTC's reboot of its excellent one handset from last year. Uh, what are you looking forward to from that? I mean, I'm just interested to see what they're going to call it. I mean, the HTC One doesn't really have a successor. They, they've said that they want to keep the One brand, so you can't be the HTC Two. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's definitely going to want to not stop selling the HTC One as it is now in its current form. So what's that going to be called? Is it an HTC One Classic with the HTC One? Uh, it's going to be an interesting thing. I mean, it's called the HTC M8 as a, as a code name, and it's definitely going to appear as that. But I think new materials, a lot more of a softer design rather than the kind of the industrial thing going on. Um, and, and the features are going to be top end, but there's much more focus again on the way that it's used. I think the Sense 6 is going to be really quite exciting, finding new ways to bring you know, what, what matters to you to the fore. I think Blink Feed has been more of a success than people expected. It's serving news in a way that people are actually using and people are getting on board with. Um, and it's difficult to say exactly what HTC is going to do because it hasn't reinvented anything so far, but it's made it a lot more usable. And hopefully that's going to continue because this is really HTC's last roll of the dice. It is very important for them, isn't it, this yeah. phone? I mean, they've had this success with the one. They need to build on that and continue the momentum because if they don't, they could seriously go the other way and really lose out to the other big players, the Samsungs, the Apples, the Sonys. But it's not really been, a, it's been a critical success, but we're still reading all these profit warnings and, and, and these slides, and it doesn't really make a lot of sense when you've got this really great phone that, that you know, should be selling better than it is, I think. And I think that, that's down a lot to marketing. I mean, everyone knows Samsung's got such a huge marketing budget. You know, iPhones kind of sell themselves, and it's very difficult to break into that. If you can't get an Apple iPhone or you don't want one, people go to Samsung because it's the one people know and you, you're getting a good deal there. And I think that that's what HTC needs to break. It needs to break the perception that if you don't get an iPhone, you, sh you can get an HTC. And that, that's going to be really important this year. And I'm really interested to see how they solve that problem as much as making a decent phone. HTC are likely to innovate though as well, as well as just sort of incrementally upgrading the one. Uh, we're hearing a lot about twin sensors for the rear camera, uh, improving the focus and the depth of field. Uh, and that'd be really exciting. The, the ultra pixel camera on the one was a little bit hit and miss. Some people quite liked it with the low light skills, but for sort of day to day images, it didn't stand up to the likes of the Xperia Z1 or the Galaxy S4. So it's an area that HTC needs to work on. I mean, I think, and I think it will. I mean, I think that there's a lot of innovation in, in so many parts of it. I think boom sound is going to come across a lot better. And I think that, you know, these are the things that mark HTC out. It's interesting to see that while we have got these big players, you know, the likes of Blackberry, you know, he saw at CES, I think, uh, the CEO said that you know that they are going to be staying in the consumer space but putting away from enterprise i mean do you think there's a space for the likes of blackberry anymore i think there is still a space for blackberry in the market specifically in the business sector it's still deeply integrated into a lot of top companies and that's really important the secure email service and that all of the business services that goes with it so in in, in that essence 
BlackBerry should be fine. In the consumer market, it's a little bit more difficult. So I think the next few months are going to be really critical for 2014 in terms of which phone you should buy. I mean, we've got the Galaxy S5, we've got MWC that's going to show us some more things about Tizen, maybe a bit more about Firefox OS, and just you know, the kind of the trend that's going to be happening. And it's really interesting to see what HTC does, if, that makes a phone, if they, that's a brand that makes a phone that's really interesting and really innovative. I think we've got a really exciting time coming up ahead. And by the time the iPhone 6 launches, there'll be some real competition there. And that's, that's just really exciting. For all you folks watching us over at YouTube but not familiar with our site, here are some of the big smartphone stories you might have missed this week. We look at why 2014 will be a big year for wireless charging. A miniaturized version of the Nokia Lumia 1520 has been tipped. Will its 4.3 inch Full HD screen blow the competition away? And as Nintendo looks to new business structures, might we finally see Mario on our smartphones? So that's all for this week, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to join us again next week for another Tech Radar show. And as always, please do remember to like, subscribe, and leave us your thoughts in the comments below.